Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome. I am waiting for my ride and we are going to Mannheim. I purchased a vehicle that I typically don't purchase. And honestly, I've been kind of, I've had them before. The vehicle is a Subaru, so I stay away from Subarus. I've had them before. For some reason, they don't sell very well for me. I know uh, dealerships and friends who own those dealerships, they sell fairly well for them. So I'm always, you know, tempted. But the one thing I'm learning is Subaru buyers, at least in this area, are very picky in what Subaru they get. So typically they don't want base, the cheapest trim, they want something nicer. So what did I end up getting? I picked up a 2020 Subaru Legacy Premium. From the photos, I see that it has a really fancy big screen. Uh, this is the newest Subaru I've ever owned or purchased. Um, and it has a rebuilt title. Obviously, it's fixed. I'm not into repairing cars. I don't have time for it. And with like minor damage, I'll buy them by obviously cheaper cars. And this is a nicer car. From the photos that I saw, the passenger seat has a few rips. Um, and then a few minor imperfections on the body. Let me try to get away from the light. Uh, but nothing too serious from what I saw. So I bid on it this morning. Uh, it went on offer at 12 and a half thousand. And after fees, I am $13,050 in it. Now MMR, which is Mannheim Market Report for this Subaru by VIN number with this many miles, I think was around $19,000. And I'll share pictures, you know, if I could pull them up, if I have them. Um, so I got it, you know, say $7,000 cheaper than MMR for a rebuild title. Off of $20,000, that's nearly, you know, a 50% discount, if you will. I don't know how much I am going to list it for sale for, but the cheapest one I saw was slightly more miles than the one I am going to pick up. And there's actually my ride. Um, it's listed for, I believe, 18,000, but it's a limited. So it has a moonroof and it has leather seats. So let me close up the gate and uh, let's get to Mannheim and actually take a look at it rather than just talk about it. And we have made it to Mannheim. Look at this cool Mustang bright red Corvette lots of cars I don't know how many sold but we are looking for my Subaru and it should be somewhere over there check this thing out full roll bar what is it three-point harness seats I don't know what's clicking underneath it's only 23,000 miles. Looks like a big screen. Look at this just textured outside. Prodigy springs, beadlock wheels. That's a beauty. I almost don't like that they move them. I mean, it's sale day. It hasn't even been that darn long. Why are you guys moving them in random places? Just leave them in lane. If they don't get picked up today, then move them around. I've already had a few, uh, you know, scenarios where I had to really, really search for a car that I purchased. But a white legacy should kind of stand out, stick out. I just see a whole bunch of newer BMWs. Seven Series, man. I love the big body Germans. <sighs> where could you be, Subaru, Subaru? Found a white one, but mine should be newer than this. Yeah, I have different wheels. Oh my, oh my. Come on, why are you why are you like this? <sighs> I don't like this. Randomly came across this, but it looks like my camera battery is about to die. Man, look at the exhaust tips on this thing. 
Elantra and looks like bucket seats, those light up. That's actually hecka dope. Nice screen, 6,600 miles. I am impressed. Dang, doesn't look that bad at all. Okay, I don't know how much battery I have left, but this is my Subaru right here. Okay, that BMW, looks pretty nice. M4, most likely. Yes, this is mine. So right off the bat, this is an issue that I saw. Um, there was something else, if I remember correctly. Okay. Camera battery died, so we are using this. Subaru Starlink, like I said, big, big screen, fancy screen. Looks like we have apps and everything else. Whatever that means, off. Access battery, key low. Where it is? Here we go, and it looks like it will have a removable battery, which... Uh, some of these cars, they usually have like a slot to put in to charge. I don't know if Subaru has that. Trip reset, yes, we could do that. Just to see how far I drive it. So it looks like it possibly has like lane holding capabilities. I have no idea about Subarus, guys. So we do have a backup camera. And aside from a TPMS light, I don't really have anything. And whatever parking assist or whatever that is says it's off. Now I know my wife's BMW that light or similar light also stays orange and then once you go above 40 miles per hour it turns green and then it essentially reads the lanes and if you kind of go uh, off the road a little bit it'll start to vibrate and beep at you so i'm curious if this is a same system as that but we'll find out i mean engine sounds healthy healthy obviously i haven't even went far but car does feel buttoned down Fasten seatbelts. I always do this. If you guys haven't noticed, let me get some better light. Every single time I pick up a car, I don't buckle in and I get this beeping, beeping. But we are almost at the security gate, so let's get this thing out. Look, it's like Amazon. Look at how like fugly these things look. Like what the heck is that? I'm actually curious if they are full electric or something. They look really, really weird. Okay, here we go. Maiden Voyage in a 2020 Subaru Legacy. Uh, I has heated seats and they are toasty and warm. Actually feels really, really good. Um, I poked around. We have Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay, which I don't use any. Uh, I know my wife uses CarPlay. So I guess we're gonna have navigation here um, and all the parks of Android Auto and uh, Apple CarPlay, but no navigation screen right off the bat. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff to go through, which I will probably get familiar with down the road as I drive it. But the goal is to actually take it to the lot right now and then pull out a vehicle that I have with Mannheim on uh, basically consignment, I took it there, but I got a phone call, someone might be interested in it, so I want to pull it out. Uh, but this still hasn't turned off. Let's see if, well, actually I haven't been anything faster than 35. Oh, I hear a little bit of air coming through right there. But the light is still on, off, whatever that means. So newer car, newer technology, I'll obviously have to look into things to kind of learn and figure out, see what I could turn off, what I can turn on. But so far, mechanically, it's running really, really well. The window noise was because the window was cracked a little bit. So user error. Um, but I've been kind of messing with uh, the settings because we were kind of in traffic, there was a accident, which usually this road is like clear shot. I never have traffic here, but there was, but obviously because of an accident. You know, honestly, I am genuinely surprised at how much you get for 13 grand. 
obviously someone will probably pay 15 16 to take it off the lot but regardless for 15 16 grand i am surprised pleasantly surprised how much technology you get in these newer cars which is just fantastic like look at all this driver assistance we have different settings and then i had something it showed me the car the car itself now it doesn't show me the car but it literally had like automatic headlight settings and everything in between so so far pleasantly surprised i like it a lot made it to the lot you know literally no issues I'll quickly show you guys a white car obviously is going to show all the imperfections so there's one there's another one which will probably you know could get it cleaned up that one that's the bigger one a few minor ones right there but aside from that i guess some in the front right here aside from that it's a solid car it looks like it's actually well optioned i will uh get the build sheet for and show you guys um on the screen what options it has and take a look we even have cameras up here for the lane assist and everything else so premium package is actually pretty solid don't know how well it will kind of show on camera but it's very pleasant on the eyes like a soft white if that makes sense but there it is my thirteen thousand dollar purchase so i'll take it home today get kind of familiar with it i will actually photograph it right now it will need a clean up nothing crazy um but at the very least i will have a photograph and i will actually list it for sale and if anything do kind of a iou hey you could leave the car here and we will take care of the detailing or drop it off at this place and we'll cover the bill um if the customer so chooses to do that but i don't want to sit on it too long obviously i purchased it to sell it and i used my flooring line to purchase it so time is of the essence this is one of those that I'll have to rush and not waste any time on. But as of right now, pleasantly surprised and impressed by the, the car. I mean, very simple yet not simple car. I dig it. Much, much, much later. It has been a few weeks. Um, Subaru has been sold. And uh, I actually ended up keeping it for a little bit. My sister-in-law was in town staying with us for a few weeks and uh, she kind of uh, drove the car a little bit. I don't remember how many miles we put on it. Maybe 1,500 miles total. So obviously it was driven, you know, for a dealer, 1,500 miles on any car is uh, quite a bit. And ended up doing uh, various repairs on it. So one, I did take it through a full detail, got it cleaned up. Two, the passenger seat had holes and rips in it, uh, which I also replaced. I think the new seat was like $220. The problem is I replaced the seat and then I got an airbag light. And turns out that the Subaru, their system, you have to remove, I believe it was four sensors um, underneath the seat on the railing in order to not reprogram the new seat. I reached out to Nick and he goes, look, if you can replace those sensors, basically move them from the original seat to the one you install, he's like, that's gonna be a lot better uh, programming it programming a new seat the airbag uh, I guess sensors or whatever they're called he's like it's it's not gonna be worth uh, your resources it's going to be too expensive so that's what I did um, so I pulled out the seat replaced it had the light and then I had to pull the seat out and it probably took about 20 30 minutes to replace those sensors uh, a lot of moving parts I mean just pain in the rear um, spent a lot of time behind the wheel of the Subaru and honestly it's not a bad car it gets the job done it gets you from point a to point b but the thing is so annoying like the tech in it uh specifically the start stop system you know when you come to a red light and the car shuts off on its own to like save fuel and whatnot i turned it off uh with a physical button i turned it off in the settings yeah every single time you start the car the system is on it is unbelievably annoying 
and then uh, the tag that's in there like lane departure assist whatever any system that you turn off it almost like throws a warning sign on the dash which obviously it doesn't look good when you're selling the car because it almost gives you the impression that the system is broken and it's not working but it is it's just turned off and uh, road noise is pretty heavy inside the car I mean honestly it's a cheap car and like when I buy one to daily drive uh, I, I struggle saying yes uh, and the reason being is it's cheap it's so difficult to explain uh, like yes it gets you from point A to point B but it's noisy there's no like interior insulation the tech is nice but it's super annoying like Bluetooth it would connect to it and then at random spots it would disconnect Bluetooth for like audio for music and then a minute later it would reconnect itself and then you know 30 minutes down the road it randomly disconnect like it was just so weird not a fan not a fan but who ended up buying it was a 20 year old female um, she first applied for credit she got approved for the credit and then she came out she goes hey I'll just give you cash for it and I sold it for 16k um, I made money on it it was a good experience I actually lived with the car for a little bit like I said my sister-in-law drove it for for a bit um, it's not a bad car and I'm not hating on Subarus uh, you know they're fairly reliable but it's not my style of car and I wouldn't buy one to like daily drive uh, the the minor things I found wrong with it really really annoyed me um, I'd rather get a cheaper car that won't kind of drive me nuts even if it's you know Ford Escape or something along those lines for some reason the Subaru just almost irked me if that makes sense but I want to say thank you for watching I really appreciate your support I am recording it out here and it's really cold and my hands are starting to shake um, but yeah thank you for your support thank you for watching this video let me know do you have a Subaru would you drive a Subaru I'm curious like is my opinion you know solely to me or are there others who kind of share my thoughts on Subarus let me know in the comment section below see you guys in another video